In the words of mathematics educator Jer Confrey, mathematics has always been a tool-based activity. The tools that we've used for the last several thousand years to, to do and to learn mathematics have been cognitive tools uh, right through to algorithms and calculus, all the cognitive tools. These days, these have been joined by technological tools which enable all sorts of new possibilities for doing and learning mathematics. Now, one of the great cognitive tools for learning mathematics, of course, must be multiple representations. The more different ways you can think about something, the deeper your understanding of it. Imagine trying to teach and learn algebra, for instance, without also referring to uh, graphs, Cartesian um, diagrams of those algebraic terms. It's almost impossible to, to consider the teaching of one without relying deeply and fundamentally on students' visualisation and deeper understandings that come from uh, what might be thought of as a, almost a geometric approach. What about number? If you were to list the two representations of numbers, the two formats with which we think about numbers, you would probably say fractions and decimals. And of course that's, that's right. And the sad bit is that in schools at least, and mostly everywhere else, that's as far as it goes. We know that fractions are a useful way to represent rational numbers. But as soon as things start to get interesting, we fall back on decimals. Possibly even because modern calculators and computers think in terms of approximations rather than exact uh, values. But there is a third, what I consider a fundamentally important representation of numbers that we don't consider in schools, and I believe we should. And this is continued fractions. Every real number, rational and irrational, can be represented as a continued fraction. Not surprisingly, normal fractions, uh, we know they can represent only rational numbers. Continued fractions are different, full of wonderful patterns and relationships. Now, of course, again, it's no surprise that rational numbers will produce finite continued fractions, like the one you see in front of you now. Irrational numbers produce infinite continued fractions. Fine, you say, just like decimals. The difference is, even irrational continued fractions can be predictable. In other words, irrational numbers using continued fractions um, become coherent and understandable. They are full of patterns that students can use to not just to study more deeply and understand what's going on, but to approximate, to find a value as close as you like. Suppose, for instance, that your students wanted to approximate the square root of 2. And they wanted to get as close as they possibly could. How might you do this? Well, short of punching it into a calculator, um, you're reliant on the decimal form, which is a, an unpredictable array by definition. Uh, the sequence of numbers cannot cannot be predicted. You don't know what's going to come next. 
So you're stuck with whatever the calculator gives you. Continued fractions are different. You can get as close as you like. And with the use of calculators and computers now, that means using a continued fraction, for instance, your students could evaluate an irrational number to as many decimal places as they liked. Now that may not seem all that important, but in terms of understanding how numbers work, and of course the nature of mathematics itself, mathematics is a search for patterns and relationships and should be taught as such. What a wonderful source of patterns and relationships we have in continued fractions. Quick look, take a, a fraction like 10 over 7. We know that's 1 and 3 sevenths. If we were to turn the 3 sevenths upside down, in other words, take its reciprocal, 1 over, then it becomes 1 over 7 on 3. Now 7 on 3 can be broken down to 2 and 1 third, and suddenly we see how we build a continued fraction. Now, like most other things in mathematics, continued fractions can have multiple representations. Uh, they can be written in the quite lovely fraction form. Uh, they can be written as, as just a string of numbers, a list. We see that 10 over 7 is an interesting continued fraction. While its fraction form, 10 over 7, 1 and 3 sevenths may not look all that interesting, as a continued fraction, it's very significant. It's the unique continued fraction 1, 2, 3. I wonder what the continued fraction 1, 2, 3, 4, what fraction represent, is represented by that? Well, that's the sort of investigation that's sitting waiting for students to engage in. The tools provided in the... Uh, the pages, the websites that uh, I'm looking at here, uh, based upon wonderful free GX Web dynamic software, dynamic geometry software, uh, allow students the opportunity to explore and investigate. So, for instance, a geometric representation of continued fractions can be quite lovely. Take 10 over 7, as we see there, plot the point P. P is 10, 7, and forms a corner of a rectangle. OK, if we think of that rectangle, 10, 7, as one representation of the fraction 10 over 7, then, and we break it into squares as large as possible. You see the first one? The blue square is going to be 7 by 7. Then that leaves a space with which two smaller squares and then three smaller squares again. In other words, this is a representation of the continued fraction for 10 over 7. 1, 2, 3. If I grab the point P and move it around, then it assumes different values. What about the fraction 8 over 5? Well, if we look at the, uh, at the diagram, at the geometric representation, we see that 8 over 5 is another very interesting continued fraction. It, in fact, it's a list of 1s. 1, 1, 1, 1, 1. By the way, continued fractions which end in a 1 can be written in one of two forms. You could add that 1 to the number before it, as you see uh, on the diagram. So one representation is 1, 1, 1, 2, uh, or as a string of 1s. All sorts of different possibilities. Number like 9, 0, 7, 9 over 7, 1, 3, 2, 1 plus 1 over 3 plus 1 over 2. Now, reading up on continued fractions, 
A number of writers referred to them as like a jigsaw puzzle. And I went searching to see if I could find a jigsaw version of continued fractions. Couldn't find one. So I spent a few days with my GX web and came up with this. So the instructions, drag point P or use the input button to explore different numbers and their continued fractions. Press jigsaw to try the continued fraction jigsaw. Practice turning continued fraction arrays back to numbers using the step-by-step -step button. Try the jigsaw now. Drag the squares using the blue corner points. Use them to fill the given rectangle. So like a jigsaw, if your squares are scattered around, they should fill the rectangle that's given. For this first introductory run, match them with fixed squares of the same size. We'll see what that means now. Once all the squares are in place, press input or the jigsaw button again to try your answer. And hint, for your first answer, try one, two, three. All right. Now what this does, it randomly produces a, um, a jigsaw, a messed up version of the continued fraction. So what we do is we grab the movable points and it's not very hard to see where they will go. And once again, we've done our jigsaw for this number and this one's got the hint, it tells you what it is. So if we press the jigsaw button and enter the answer, if I just enter 10 over 7, it'll say, thank you very much, that's correct. If I enter the list, which is obvious from our diagram, 1, 2, 3, let's see what happens. It's going to help you evaluate the continued fraction. To evaluate a continued fraction, you start with the bottom numbers, the last two values, and work your way up. So 1, 2, 3, written in continued fraction form we see, is 1 plus 1 over 2 plus 1 over 3. If we start at the bottom and look at that lower fraction, it's 2 plus 1 third. Simplify 2 plus 1 third. Well, twice 3 is 6 plus 1 is 7 over 3. Yes. Now note that 1 over 7 over 3 is 3 sevenths. And the last part is 1 plus 3 sevenths, which will be 10 over 7. Yes, 1, 2, 3 is 10 over 7. Well done. But we knew that already. Let's try another one. Hmm. Right. Can you see what the continued fraction is? In this case, 2, 4. Now, that's not very hard because if there's only two numbers, it's going to be 2 plus 1 over the next number. 2 plus 1 over 4. So let's try that. 2 plus 1 over 4 is 9 over 2. No, that's not right. Another try? Sure. Hmm. What did I do wrong? Well, let's find out. Let's press jigsaw again, and this time we'll put in 2, 4. Now, start with, as we said, 2 plus a quarter, twice 4 is 8, plus 1 is 9 over 4. 2 and a quarter, 9 over 4. That's better. And 2, 4 is 9 over 4. Well done. Notice the... Um, uh, I've included circles. I can turn them on or off. The circles help to make it clearer of how many numbers we're looking at. Uh, we can also turn off the fill. And in fact, we can hide the model. And so we've just got our number. But generally we would leave those things. Let's reset it. Let's try another one. Hmm. Now this one's a little bit different.
Why is it different? Well, let's find out. You might notice that this one is high, it's, it's more vertical than horizontal. What do you think that will mean? Well, the continued fraction is 1, 2. Now, 1, 2 is 1 and a half, which is 3 over 2. Sorry, that's not the correct result. Do you want another try? Um, no, let's just ask for help. Now, 0, 1, 2, 0, 1, 2 is 6 over 9. And that simplifies to 2 over 3. OK. If the rectangle is standing up, if it's more vertical than horizontal, it's a number less than 1. And its continued fraction form will always begin with a 0. So if we were to put in, we can put in any fraction we like. Input, let's put in uh, 9 over 6. And how many convergence? Well, we don't need too many for this one. 9 over 6 is 3 over 2. And its continued fraction is 1, 2, or, as we said before, 1, 1, 1. But let's not stop there. Continued fractions can also represent irrational numbers. Let's take a number like pi. Let's start with 6 convergence. Now things get interesting. The first 6 uh, terms of pi's continued fraction are 3, 7, 15, 1, 292 and 2. Now, that's pretty cool. We see the very first two numbers, 3 and 7. Think about the continued fraction form. That's 3 and 1 7. So if we were to cut off after the 7, then we would get the version of pi that you are taught to use in schools, 22 over 7. And that's reasonable. It's good to about two decimal places. Let's try it. Pi and 2. Two steps. One more step now. 3.1415. That's pretty good. That's four decimal places. Now the thing with continued fractions that's very cool is... Let's go for 10. If you come across a big number, if one of the terms is large, what that means is you cut off before that term and you are going to get an extremely good approximation. So the 15, for instance, is quite a large term. You cut off before 3, 7, 3 and 1 seventh or 22 over 7 is a good approximation. Now, as you add each term, your approximation gets better and better and better. So, for instance, we use 10 terms, and we're accurate to about 6 or 7 decimal places. Let's look at our model here. 3, 7... So we've got our first three, then the next seven. If we keep zooming in, the next set is 15. If we keep zooming in, there's a one. So 15, one. And if you really zoom in and keep going, you'll see that it's actually got the 292, you'll have to take my word for it, 292 circles in there. And it keeps going. It keeps going. One, one, one. One, two. So this is actually a very powerful representation for uh, irrational numbers. 
But hold on. We said that continued fractions could be predictable for irrational numbers. Let's have a look at a couple. The golden ratio or golden mean is a very popular uh, mathematical number for all sorts of reasons, found extensively in nature and art and all sorts of places. Now, its continued fraction is very special. It's an irrational number. In fact, it's 1 plus root 5 over 2. But its continued fraction is all 1s. Interestingly, you can solve a quadratic equation to get this continued fraction. If we take the equation x plus 1 over x, well, x is equal to 1 plus 1 over x, so if we replace that lower x, denominator x, with 1 plus 1 over and continue to do that, you'll see where the continued fraction comes from. But that gives us the quadratic equation x squared equals x plus 1, and that is, in fact, the quadratic for 1 plus root 5 over 2. Look at square root 2 as a continued fraction. 1 and then an infinite array of 2s. This is what I was talking about for predictability. So in other words, if I want to calculate the square root of 2 as accurately as I can, I know what to do. I know what numbers come next, unlike the decimal form where the next number is always unpredictable. Turns out that quadratic irrationals have lovely periodic simple continued fraction form. So for instance, uh, one like square root 3 or square root 5. Let's look at root 3. Here we're solving quadratic to get the square root of 3. Now its continued fraction is 1, 1, 2, 1, 2, 1, 2, 1, 2, and so on. So again, predictable, because it's quadratic. Well, that's fine, but we seem to be no better off than what we were with decimals, in a sense, because you get to numbers like pi, and once again, we're confronted with a random array of numbers. 3, 7, 15, 1, 2, 92. There is no pattern there. But don't give up. Because continued fractions come in more than one flavour. Mostly what you look at with continued fractions are what are called simple continued fractions where the numerators are all 1s. However, great mathematicians over the centuries have been interested to unwrap other forms. So for instance, there are multiple continued fraction versions for pi. Look at this one. Look at the, the, low, the first array of numbers, the numerators if you like, 1, 3, 5, 7, 9, they are the odd numbers. Now look at the second row of numbers. We begin with a 4, but then 1 squared, 2 squared, 3 squared, 4 squared. This is a predictable continued fraction where you could, especially with a computer, go to any degree of accuracy you like. Euler's number E has several forms. Look at this one. 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9 is the first row, and then 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. It turns out that irrational numbers of any sort can be expressed uh, predictably using continued fractions. Now there's so much more to explore and I will refer you to the link uh, provided with the video but so many connections between continued fractions and beautiful mathematics. Fiery numbers and continued fractions well worth exploring. Beautiful mathematical functions, Bessel functions, gamma function, even chaos theory, 
all touch on continued fractions. Well worth exploring with your students. If mathematics is a search for patterns and relationships, there's probably no richer source than this particular topic.